Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to the July 8th Oklahoma City Planning Commission meeting and call the meeting to order. Uh, first, if you have cell phones or pagers, I would ask you to either turn those off or silence them, please. Most of you are familiar faces to us, but if you are not the applicant and you have come to speak to us on a case today, if you would uh, sign one of these little sheets that are available on the table outside the chambers, give them to our secretary, we would be happy to hear you. And with that, we'll go to approval of the June 24th minutes. There are no additions or changes I will with approval. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Cast your votes, and they're approved. And continuance request, Russell. We have one uncontested request for continuance, which is item 17, PUD 1416, a request to defer until August the 12th. Did anyone come to talk to us about that item today? I move to continue item number 17. Second. A motion and second to continue item 17. Cast your votes, and that's approved. We have three new requests for continuance. Item 7, which is PUD 1418. Item 8, C6225. And item 11, C6221. All requests to continue until August the 12th. Has anyone come today to talk to us about items 7, 8, or 11 on our agenda? If not, move to continue items 7, 8, and 11. Second. We have a motion to continue the three items. Cast your votes. They're continued. Are there any continuous requests from the public? There are none. No items on the consent docket. On items requiring separate vote, item 1 is SPUD 567. It's an application by Danny Gassett to rezone 7601 West Hefner Road from PUD 884 to SPUD 567 in Ward 8. If you give us your name and address, please. Sure. Dan Gassett, uh, 4253 Hunt Drive in Carrollton, Texas. Uh, good afternoon. I'm coming back uh, before your planning commission to uh, indicate from the old SPUD to the new that uh, we have uh, are complying with all the TEs. We have changed uh, the lots from 11 to 10. We've reduced the curb cuts from 4 to 2 on Stony Creek Drive. Uh, also going from a public uh, road request to a private and we have increased the parking from 69 to 91. Uh, spaces, which uh, is in compliance with the, uh, I believe, Article 59 or something of that effect. Commissioners, that addresses at least many of the points that we made two weeks ago. No one has signed up. Any discussion or questions? Mr. Chairman, I believe it addresses our concerns. Uh, I will just have one quick question. Uh, you will be plotting these as you develop them. Is that correct? Uh, I am in discussion with the engineer at this point as to whether we're going to do a full plat uh, or whether we're going to uh, plat it as as we go. Uh, but they, one way or the other, you're going to plat it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll move approval of the application. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve item one. Cast your votes. And that's approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 2 is SPUD 568, which is an application by condominium owners of Cedar Springs Condominiums to rezone at 12351 North May Avenue from R4 and C3 to SPUD 568, Ward 8. I'm Randy Hill with E.D. Hill Surveying and Engineering Company representing the applicant. And Susan Binkowski, one of the applicants, is here in the chambers as well. Oh. Last time there was going to be some further discussion with your neighbors, and uh, I at least understand you've tried to include some of the issues that were concerned to the neighbors in your document this time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We uh, we had two meetings with the homeowners uh, association and and uh, neighbors 
one at Quail Creek Country Club uh, about 10 days ago, and then an, a subsequent one at Quail Creek Bank this last Tuesday night. And uh, we made numerous revisions to the SPUD in accordance with uh, our discussions with them. We filed those with the city staff, and uh, we're all in accordance, I believe, with the uh, with the neighbors. And I think they they also believe that this is the best for the neighborhood. This revised uh, this SPUD, because what we're really trying to do is to uh, make it possible for more owner-occupied units in this uh, condominium complex. So that's the whole idea of it. And uh, I, one last thing, and that is uh, Commissioner Gales asked me about making a further change today and uh, to have the underlying district uh, R3 instead right. of R4. Uh, I analyzed that th uh, this morning here with the uh, city staff. and I don't see any problem with that, and so we would uh, request that change also be included as a part of the, uh, as a part of the SPUD. Okay. Nick, anything else at, with respect to this? No, we would have that discussion, and uh, as he indicated, uh, that works for them. Uh, so I'd move approval of the application uh, with the amendment to uh, underlying R3 zoning. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item two as conditioned to underlying zone of R3. Cast your votes, and you're approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item three is PV71 application by Nest Homes LLC to vacate a portion of the final plot of Preston to delete plot note number 12. Mr. Chairman, Members of the Commission, Brian Coon with Coon Engineering representing the applicant. I um, have met with staff numerous times. This plot number 12 was developed, I think, one of those deals that we kind of shot from the hip at the, while we were having the plot heard and went with the 70%. Uh, fronts and 15 foot setback if it's a front load garage or side load garage. Uh, we were operating under a previous PUD, which we can't even do the 15 foot because there's a 20 foot uh, utility easement in the front. Staff is having a hard time keeping up the building permits on 70%. So it kind of it wasn't a request by them, but when we brought it to them, they said that'd be great because that w there's no way we can monitor that. We will be utilizing the new. Uh, I don't know if it's a policy right now or whatever it was. We came up with our five lot different options. We'll be utilizing that. We won't be using the 15-foot, obviously, because we have a 20-foot uh, UE. So staff was happy with getting rid of this note because it was just too hard to try to keep up with. And you have the requisite signatures now, Brian? Yes. Okay. No one signed up? Move approval of the application. Second. Okay, have a motion and second to approve item three. Cast your votes. And Thank you. You're approved. Item four is C6226, which is the final plot of the Grove South, phase one, and what age? Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, David Box, 522 Calcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant. Also with me is Barry Lodge with Red Rock Engineering, Dale Stewart, and Matt Austin with Caliber Development. Our application today seeks the final approval of the final plat of the Grove South Phase 1. This was on a previous docket, which we continue to allow us to meet with staff to address several concerns they had with our application. Uh, since the last docket, myself, Dale Stewart, and Barry Lodge had the opportunity to sit down with staff and have addressed the concerns that they had. The staff has recommended approval subject to seven TEs. We are in agreement with the TEs and to seek your approval. We're here to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Commissioners, there's no one signed up. Comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, as the staff report indicates, that final plats conform with the preliminary. I'd move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve item four. Cast your votes, and you're approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item five is C6212, a preliminary plot of Pleasant Grove in Ward 8. Good afternoon. I'm Kendall Dillon with Craft and Tool Sparks, representing the applicant. And um, since the uh, previous meeting that this application was continued, um, the uh, rezoning application has been heard by the City Council, at which it was approved and is in place today. Um, since then, we have, have well have updated and revised the preliminary plat after we heard a few of you all's concerns. So we have resubmitted that. And I will point out that uh, your staff report, the body of your report, is correct as per the updated plat. However, 
the layout map in the back of your staff report, I believe, is, is the old layout. So I've given you, that's what I've passed out, is the most updated and current layout. And I think that we also on the screen have the, uh, the new layout there as well. And just to real briefly highlight a couple of the uh, things that we've revised in regards to the plat. If you'll notice 141st Street as well as and uh, Northwest 140th Street, previously were two cul-de-sacs back to the west, but we went ahead and connected those streets up to kind of reduce the number of cul-de-sacs and to increase that connectivity that I know is important to you all. So we've done that, and obviously we've left only two cul-de-sacs remaining in the addition. We've also, and it, it, on the particular scale we're looking at, it's kind of hard to see, but what we have done is we took the, the north four streets, and we have included, a, they're long and they're kind of gentle, but we've included curves in those streets. Um, I won't oversell that, but they do have about a 15-foot offset, so that we think that aesthetically and some other things, if you line up down the road, that it'll, it'll improve the aesthetics of it and the view coming down the street and help break those things up. Um, likewise, our previous plat, we had, there was some ambiguity in relation to portions of the common area that were recreational versus drainage, so we kind of... Uh, Revise those on the plat to kind of give you a better understanding of what we're dealing with. And then also you have another exhibit there in the, on the second sheet that kind of better defines those areas so that you can see what's going on there. Um, so those are a few of the changes. Once again, the zoning's in place. We're in complete compliance with your zoning ordinance, asking for no variances. We're in agreement with all of the TEs, and uh, we'd ask for your approval. Again, commissioners, no one has signed up. I move for the application. Can you I, I do. Question. Since yeah. you didn't oversell it, I don't want to over nitpick, but um, <laughs> do you have the sense really that, that this uh, much of an offset is going to make a difference visually? Oh, yeah. I do think it will make some difference. I don't think, it, and we don't have quite uh, enough space to add a, a more exaggerated curve in there. So to answer your question, I think it's somewhere between optimally what I'd like to get in there and probably not having any effect on it at all. So I do think that by adding the curve, even though on a scale this size that it's it's kind of hard to see, I do think it will help break that up a little bit. Yes. I find that in some sort of backhanded way kind of encouraging. I'll, I'll be interested to see how it looks when it's built out. Sure. In the idea that we have had when we were dealing with this issue, I think you know, just mentally you sort of go to a more exaggerated um, curve but it, it would be very encouraging to find that um, a minimal amount of offset could make a visual impact I'd, I'd like to think that's true okay I'd say when we build this one we can use it as a test case I guess Bob you had something I do uh, I'd like it that you eliminated two cul-de-sacs that was good for the revised plan but have you given consideration, maybe I misunderstood or didn't hear, uh, for what Mr. Coons just referred to, the garage front committee work and the offsets and the, you know, have you, is this going to be straight garage fronts with a tree planted in front? What we are doing in regards to your policy is, once again, and understanding the impact of the curves, but we have, from your policy, put curves in the street, we would agree to moving the trees that we've agreed to to the right of way, given that the utility department permits us to do that. We talked about and that. And then the third thing that, once again, we're not, it's not a final design, so some of these things are a little bit difficult at this point, but one of the things that's discussed in your policy is grade change as well. In this particular site, as you go to the west, it does tend to fall off a decent amount. So I would suspect that we're going to be able to get some elevation change as we go back to west to kind of add to the overall um, attempts at mitigating, you know, your concern. So if you look at it, I do think that we've included three options and considerations in regard to your policy. So that's kind of what our attempt is in regards to, to meeting that and addressing that issue. And, the, and the, you know, like Janice was talking about, the, there's a barely discernible curve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've, you've just got a bare curve that, I mean, you know, if you have an optical, it's going to be a straight line. And to have garage fronts coming out with this dense of a development, it really will be a, one of these unattractive developments with a dead tree in the front because nobody waters it. The encouragement is is to really look at that policy about the setbacks and 
because you really do have a ton of issues here with a small curve that's not going to do it I love the idea of street trees you know if you can do that between the curb and the sidewalk and we've talked about this at that appearance committee whether or not the, the, the public works or water you know you need to get with them about where that stuff is because there was approval on that from them to do street trees that serves to enhance this neighborhood dramatically if you can do that but really the setbacks the different things you can do I can't I can't say that I'm going to vote against this because you comply with the subdivision regulations but we also worked hard on that policy for garage fronts and we appreciate giving as much consideration to that with a subdivision development like this it, it really will make it a much better place that you can produce for the benefit of the city right. so that's my comment any other discussion or comments commissioners no one signed up oh nick i'm sorry i had moved approval i don't think we were waiting on a second second okay we have a motion and a second to approve item five cast your votes and that's approved editorial comment in neighborhoods where there are street trees you tend not to look and notice the setback of the houses i mean it's just sort of masked Correct. item six is c6204 which is the final plat of ironstone phase one in ward eight good afternoon commissioners mark ritchie with civil design and survey of oklahoma here on behalf of the applicant Pleased to say we can agree with TEs 1, 2, 6, 7, 10, and 11. <laughs> TEs 3, 4, and 8 have been satisfied just this week since you received your packets by additional submittals. And we would ask that TEs 5 and 9 be reserved for resolution through the engineering process and prior to the acceptance of the dedications by the council and run concurrently with the construction of the project. As a reminder, commissioners, we did not approve the uh, zoning for this nor the preliminary plat at our last meeting. Actually, the zoning was in place. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. The preliminary plat. My mistake. In that regard, Mr. Chairman, a question for council. I, in my years on this commission, I don't believe we've ever seen a final plat after we have denied the preliminary plat without a change. That's probably true. The preliminary plat, though, is really just a method by which the applicant can get some instruction from the commission on how they're going to view their case. They have a right to be heard on their final plat. So that's what they've elected to do. Ordinarily, people will amend their uh, plat to comply with the, the requirements of the preliminary, but they have a right to be heard on their final plat. And, or they would withdraw. That would be their other option, I suppose. Tell me again which ones are going to be, you're asking, be reserved. Items five and nine that deal with offsite easements. I don't, oh, here it is. The <clears throat> western entryway, uh, which we're renaming as a part of item six. It'll be, it'll now be called Burning Iron Boulevard. Uh, it's a multi-use entryway meant to serve as the second entry for phase one the primary entry for the future apartment track and a back entry for the frontage the commercial frontage out here on portland and because it falls outside it falls outside the plat boundary because it's a different zoning and it was my understanding at the time that that should be outside the plat since it was a different zoning i've since been told by staff that it could have as easily been included inside the boundary and not caused an issue so it's really semantics we know we're going to build that road all the submittals have been turned in as far as construction plans and that kind of thing and we're we're amenable to even paying the the application fee in arrears if if that's necessary the application fee is fourteen hundred dollars um, but it really falls in the same category as right here at the southwest corner of the development there's a sewer easement that comes straight west and then down the alignment and then crosses this future alignment for the highway these sewer plans for serving this development 
are the half mile of sewer, those plans are approved, um, just waiting construction and work order issuance. That easement also has not been submitted to the city. It, it's customary for these off-site easements to just happen during construction, be granted, dedicated, filed of record, and then we check the box before we go to city council and we don't get to build we don't get to build building permits or anything until those easements are in place and the utilities or in this case the roadway are, roadways are built and final inspected so those are the two that we were asking to just reserve for future resolution nick um i thought you had something if there are no uh well we do have someone signed up okay mr fudge Welcome back. I didn't miss you this time. Commissioners, uh, Randall Fudge, 16316 Dustin Lane. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be here, otherwise I would have put a coat and tie on for you all. Uh, I had assumed that uh, uh, a prerequisite to approval for the final plat would have been approval of the preliminary plat, and those two previous preliminary plats have been unanimously denied by this commission. So I was surprised to learn that this was still on the agenda. Uh, nothing's changed in two weeks. The uh, infrastructure of 164th is still inadequate uh, for this, uh, uh, this subdivision. And, uh, I just stress that uh, nothing's changed in two weeks, so I would urge uh, denial of the uh, final plan. Well, if it's any consolation, we've not had it, this occur in all our years on the commission either, and we just heard our municipal counselor explain to us that the applicant has the right to be heard. Which, yeah. So we were a bit surprised ourselves not having been confronted with this exact situation before. And that same assumption was, I'm, I can tell you, was made we, by the other... Reasonable. People that uh, signed that uh, petition yep. of protest and the people that were here two weeks ago. We understand. Thank you. Nick? Mr. Chairman, as Mr. Fudge said, nothing has changed. Uh, we denied the preliminary plat now twice because of the inadequate infrastructure. Uh, it hasn't changed. I've moved for denial. Second. I have a motion and a second to deny item six. Cast your votes. It is denied. Items 7 and 8 have been continued until August the 12th. Item 9 is SPD 565, an application by Accord OKC Members LLC to rezone 6446 North Peniel Avenue from R4 to SPD 565 in Ward 1. Melissa Wheeler, 3060 Northwest 41st. Um, this item was continued from the June 24th meeting um, in which the council requested more information um, based on some of the protests you received. Um, that information was actually sent to the city offices and hopefully you do have it. Um, we have consolidated the hours even since that email went to the city. Um, the pavilion building itself, which is where the building we're asking for, um, is now closing at 9 p.m. So any alcohol or mixed beverages being served would stop at 9 p.m. Um, I did make an effort. Um, I personally went to every door on college, that's 30 homes, and 60 doors, um, which consists of 30 duplexes on Penile, in an effort to bring the, our, the residents to our facility to determine, to let them see what we're doing. We have minimal turnout, but I, did, I can say that in at least one case, one of the protesters actually signed the petition and wrote the commission a letter, has actually reversed their protest, and has actually signed a support letter in support, which I can provide to the commission as soon as I'm done speaking. Um, as well, a lot of the protest has, the protesters have said that they are um, unanimously um, protesting this decision. In reviewing the petition, I have discovered that although there are 41 signatures, that actually only encompasses 29 residences on College and Penile. Out of those, um, it basically there's 120 residents living on those two streets. That means there's still 80 residents that absolutely have no protest against the commission's decision um, to approve this. 
Um, as well, there's been a lot of issues about the traffic. Um, of which uh, I just need to make aware that in 1972, when the property was built, the infrastructure was already there for the 800 homes, uh, units, that encompasses the property, in addition to the um, 90 residences on College and Peniel. Um, in a, the building that we're asking for this to be placed in um, has always been the, at the center of the property. It has always, since 1972, been a leasing center, been a club room, and had different activities going through there. Um, I honestly don't feel that an increase in traffic will occur, especially since we have converted one of our 800 units, bringing the total revenue producing units down to 799, into an actual leasing office off of 63rd Street, which means that any person wanting to view apartment homes do not have to go to the Pinal address. They can go to the 63rd Street address. I'll be more open to any questions. Let me ask you one or two here. Uh, you're wanting to have the beverage service in conjunction with meal service. Correct. Uh, would you then rule out Saturday night and Sunday night liquor sales? We do not do um, any dinner service on Sunday night at all. Um, on Saturday evening from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., um, we would um, be doing beverage service at that time, but it's only for those two hours that we would be doing, doing that. And as I read your uh, submittal to uh, Mr. Gross, the events you refer to would be events, they'd be residents only events, correct? That is correct. Resi a guest and corporate guest and residents only of the 63rd Street area. Um, you know, currently when we have an event, as with any other apartment community, the residents are allowed to bring their own beverages with them. I completely feel that with us having the power to oversee the beverage sales, that it would actually contain any problems that may currently exist. Um, obviously, we will have a licensed bartender, licensed through the ABLE Commission. Um, our courtesy patrol staff will be um, enrolled in the September class of a alcohol intervention class got given through the uh, standard off or security officers right requalification office in Oklahoma City. So we are taking steps to make sure that, that anything that is going through there will be oversaw by licensed people. Well, you would have had my vote until we got to events that don't relate to residents. Uh, I think that was a good deal of what the protest was about. I know that that's of concern to Commissioner Hensley, who isn't here today, and I know it's of concern to City Councilman Mars and whose ward you reside. Uh, So to me, if you were willing to limit the beverage sales to uh, the days of meal sales and events to resident-only events, I would be in support. But I will be more than happy to do that. Uh, now, I haven't talked to any other commissioners, so I mean, I've, that's my view, and now I'd like to hear from everyone else. Well, my, when I read the protest letters, uh, it seemed to me that that your problem with the residents, both on both streets, Penile and what's the other one? Uh, College. Uh, yeah. Uh, is that you've got golf carts and, you know, buses going up and down, up and down, up and down, none of which is related to what the application is about. It's that Correct. You, haven't controlled, you haven't controlled the traffic with what you're doing right now. Correct. And then what Commissioner Yokel just alluded to is that when this might be for... Well, like me, for instance, who doesn't live anywhere close, you're going to have a party at your clubhouse. I can go. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't increase the traffic because that's increasing the traffic. If you're dealing, if you, what you just said, just residents, but you've got. I mean, I think that maybe you have have, have, have an effort to make to become a better neighbor with these people that live in the neighborhood, with reducing the number of golf cart trips, with reducing the number of the bus trips, whatever you're doing, uh, and the parking, et cetera. You're, you're really reading the neighborhood letters. You haven't been a very good neighbor to these people that live there. 
Well, I uh, respectfully disagree. I mean, because of the increase in the property values, we uh, from our renovation alone, the property values have went up an average of nine thousand dollars this last year. That's being a pretty good neighbor. Um, the police department alone, I have several police officers, one of whom I hoped would be here to speak today, has actually voiced their approval at the reduction in crime in our area. Um, the buses that are being alluded to are buses that are specifically for the federal. Aviation Administration. Um, as we all know, they have the only academy in the nation here in Oklahoma City, and we do have a lot of FAA um, guests that stay in our corporate rooms. They're here anywhere from 30 days to 120 days. Yeah, right. The academy provides a shuttle, so they don't have to drive. Most of them come here from as far away. We have some from Brazil, actually, right now. They don't bring cars with them. Um, the shuttle provides them with, uh, or I'm sorry, the academy provides them with a shuttle service, which does does pick up um, three times a day in front of the pavilion um, and takes them to the academy and then of course drops them off three times a day as well. I like the idea of shuttle buses. That's, I mean it really is a nice thing. Mm -hmm. but, but, but again, when I was reading the protest letters, it was all about parking, traffic, and then you bring a bar that's open to everybody else. Well, that's where I came from, the same, the same with Commissioner Yoko. Well, let's I understand it's not a bar. We are not doing any outside sales yeah. whatsoever. In fact, okay. we're not even going to take cash. We can't take cash. Okay. Um, I will tell you that in an effort to assist the parking after the first meeting, um, we have eliminated, eliminated all employee parking um, in, front of that, in front of that facility. All employee parking is across the bridge, across the lake, and they walk over, which which is maybe um, at best a quarter of a mile with that. Um, so we have eliminated all of that. Um, so currently we only have guests that park in front of the facility. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, yeah, this is sort of a unique business model in Oklahoma City. I mean, I think it's um, you know, different than most, most other kinds of apartment complexes we might see in terms of the fact that they've got these uh, long stay provisions. I mean, if this was a residence inn and they want, had a restaurant in there and they wanted to serve alcohol with meals, we wouldn't think twice. We'd say, that's fine, go ahead and do it. It's a hotel, even if it's an extended stay hotel. Um, they've, I mean, I went and looked at it initially because I was really curious about this application. I didn't understand it. And uh, they've put a lot of money into the facility. It's now occupied as opposed to maybe 30 or 40 percent occupied, yeah, that success of the project is going to mean there's going to be more activity around it. And that's a good thing. We applaud that. That's what we want to see happening in the city. Uh, I think as respects this application, we just want to have it relate to the business of their business and not have it become a public venue. And I, as I understand what Ms. Wheeler is saying, she's agreeable to doing that. Nick? Mr. Chairman, I understand that. And, you know, if it was a residence inn where they put residence inns, sure, we'd approve it. But this is nestled into a residential area. If they want to provide alcohol to their residents, they can do that without an ABC, too. They just can't sell it to them. That's what they want to do. Well, well you are correct in that. I mean, we, we are a business like any other business. I, and we I are understand. Here. <laughs> but you're asking for a 17,500 square foot ABC2 overlay in a residential area. If I approve the residence in, typically we do the restaurant areas. Right. We don't do the whole hotel. And if I may also comment, that 17,000 square foot number is not correct any longer. That included the tennis courts. We did remove the tennis courts, and it scaled down to the pavilion building only, which is approximately 7,000 square feet. In that 7,000 square feet also houses a conference room, which will not be part of this. It also houses our corporate offices and licensed massage therapists and estheticians. So in the end, the space that we're talking about may be 3,000 square feet. And what is the name of that space? I'm sorry, could you what repeat? Is, what is the name of that space? We call it the pavilion. That 3,000 square feet? Correct. That, that's what we consider the pavilion, uh, which is encompassed, which encompasses the um, spa and the esthetician services and the conference room. 
So we would be talking about the dining area portion of the pavilion building, which is approximately 3,000 square feet. And that's now the application, as I understand. Correct. And we, okay, so we narrowed down to that 3,000 square feet of the dining space only. Right, where, where dinner service is held, which is in the upstairs. I, I know you don't have it in there, but it's, been, it's in the upstairs portion of the pavilion. Uh, again, a portion of that upstairs encompasses a front desk set up and a conference room. So it's not even the entirety of the upstairs portion. Mr. Chairman, yes. like Commissioner Gales, my concern about this application has to do with the location of the facility. I, I think the idea of it is neat. I think it's probably a great um, transition for this, air, for this facility and, and, and the use of it. I mean, nobody wants to see it sitting there empty or deteriorating. Um, it seems to me like the kind of services that they're providing makes perfect sense. My only concern about it has to do with the fact that it sits on a residential street. And the fact that over time, you know, the, the zoning runs with the land, and over time all those specific conditions and um, the, the process of negotiation to eliminate the impact of, of an ABC2 it's watered down, filtered, forgotten, whatever. Um, I, this, is a, this is a difficult choice for me, it really is, but I don't think that we would put a residence in in this location. Um, there's just no way. And so um, the fact that we would approve this kind of service in a hotel without giving it too much of a thought is not particularly persuasive to me. My concern is about whether this is a good use at this location. And at this facility, I think it is, but the location of the facility gives me some real pause. Well, I, I think if it was open to the public, I would, I mean, I've obviously said I wouldn't be the least bit interested in supporting it. But a lot of the residents will just they'll be walking across one of two bridges that across a lake that go from where the apartments are to have dinner. They, they're walking to their meal anyway. They're not getting, they don't have a car for the most part. Eighty percent of the people who are in that facility are FAA people. They're not driving cars. They're walking across. And I agree with all that. And I it's understand. It's so use specific. I mean, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, well, that zoning will still be there. Well, I can not tell you that our owner, the owner of the Concord, um, has designed this property to hold on to for the long term. This is simply not a case of an out-of-state owner who wants to flip it in five years. His goal is for his grandchildren to still be um, managing this property. Um, he, he's, made, it's, he's made such an impact on that area that he's actually currently pursuing other um, neglected, uh, severely neglected properties in the area as well um, to try to turn them around. Um, we have done nothing without always permission from, um, if not this commission, from, from another entity. We have followed the letter of the law through the entire renovation and even up through now. Um, so I, I don't, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there will never be any just sneaking anything through. Uh, we will, okay. <laughs> Well, and we'll, I mean, if we approve it as it's now presented to us, we do have limited hours of operation, the limited ability to deal only with residents who are in this facility, and we will probably have vigilant neighbors as well. So, I mean, you can't foresee all circumstances with all properties as we uh, consider and zone them, but... Uh, I at least would support this. So, but whatever is the pleasure of the commission at this Are point. Other protests? There's no one signed up. Then, in that event, let me make a motion to approve the application with the revisions in the application that the ABC2 overlay is limited to the what 3,000 square foot pavilion. Is that the downstairs? Di the dining area. The dining area, area only. only. And that the service of alcoholic beverages is uh, restricted on Saturday, just from I mean, from four to six, and then none on Sunday. Correct. Uh, is that it? No. 
Uh, we want to limit events to residents only, and I did not want to have alcoholic beverages on Saturday without meals. In other words, I wanted to limit it to the days when meals are served. That. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. On that basis, I move approval of the application. You should also mention 9 p.m. instead of 10. Yeah, 4 30 9, 9 p.m. Right. Yeah. Is there a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve item. Lost what my item number now? Nine. Nine. As conditioned, cast your votes. It is approved. Thank you. Item 10 is ABC 717, an application by David Dunn for an ABC 2 overlaying C3 Community Commercial at 8139 Northwest 10th Street, Ward 1. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm David Dunn, uh, 1124 North Markwell. <clears throat> uh, we we're here two weeks ago and uh, uh, at this point, I don't believe there's any protest. Uh, I've met with uh, friends of Northwest 10th Street. Uh, I've had uh, a letter sent in by the House of Kawasaki, which is the largest dealership, uh, the largest business up on our street. Uh, we, I had an unsolicited, unsolicited uh, uh, letter sent in by 40 uh, homeowners in the area. Uh, supporting it, and uh, if if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer. Okay. No, no one has signed up, commissioners. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item ten. Cast your votes, and it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> item 11 has been continued until August the 12th. <laughs> item 12 is an application by Please and Geraldine Dye to rezone 3700 Southeastern from I-1 single family to I-2 moderate industrial in Ward 7. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, David Fox, 522 Calcourt Drive. Our application today seeks to rezone the subject property from R1 to I2. As the handout makes its way around the, the horseshoe, you'll note that the area that the subject property sits in is a heavy industrialized area with I3 and I2 as the common zoning uses. We feel that the I2 use is appropriate for the area. The staff has recommended approval, and we seek your approval today. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Commissioners, no one has signed up. I move approval of application. We have a motion and a second to approve item 12. Cast your votes and you're approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13 is an ordinance related to planning and zoning code amending chapter 59. Uh, this is addresses the EMD signs in the design districts. Uh, this was uh, introduced at the last meeting. Commissioners, any discussion? We need a motion to approve this item. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 13. Cast your votes. And it is approved. Like, likewise, we need a motion to approve item 14. Russell, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, item, item 14 is uh, another ordinance that relates to signs. This is signs uh, in the downtown district. And this is also... Uh, this amends Chapter 3 of the Code. Only with approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve item 14. Cast your votes. Item, approved. item 15 is to uh, set for hearing an ordinance related to zoning and planning. Um, Amending uh, Chapter 59 of the Code. This concerns discretionary review procedures. And we need a motion to introduce and set for hearing in August. I move to introduce and set. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve item 15. Cast your votes. That's approved. Item 16 is uh, consideration of the Airport Strategic Development Program, and the request is to be received by the Planning Commission. 
We need a motion uh, to just receive. Just a motion to receive. Motion to receive the report. Move a motion to receive this report. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to receive item 16. Cast your votes. And that is approved. Planning Commission committees. Planning Commission members, any items? Any election? Election of officers. Mr. Chairman, uh, I understand that there is a uh, obligation of the Planning Commission to elect officers and in discussions with Commissioner Hensley, who's not here, who's the current vice chairman, and in discussions with the current chairman, uh, Mr. Hensley, who would be the normal, or the, the uh, normal and appropriate applicant for serving as chairman, respectfully uh, requests that he remains as vice chairman. And in that regard, uh, even though I understand from the bylaws that there is an obligation on our part to consider new chairman as every year passes, that in connection with Commissioner Hensley's work that he's doing right now that kind of prevents him from being here and you know, doing chairman's duty, uh, I would like to place into nomination uh, for vice chairman, uh, Commissioner Michael Hensley, and for chairman, uh, Commissioner John Yokel. Other nominations? No? Do we need a motion to uh, waive the bylaws first? Uh, it probably best, yes. I'll move to waive the bylaws with regard to the, this. Second. Okay, motion is second to waive the bylaws. Cast your votes. Motion on the nominations. Cast your votes. No, no, no. Dan, I think we need to draft an amendment to allow the commission to waive bylaws. I'm not sure that technically we've, we've got that ability. Planning department? Um, I don't have any items. I do not have any items this morning. Good. Oh, kidding. Uh, development services, JJ? Dan? Citizens to be heard in the back. Thank you for being here. Other business? Motion to adjourn. And that's approved. We're adjourned.